In my practice as a board-certified dermatologist and acne expert, one of the most feared presentations of acne that we encounter is something called acne fulminans or acne conglobata. In these forms of acne, severe, deep, nodulocystic kind of acne that also has this ulceration and crusting and bleeding, these spots can be incredibly painful and they can lead to scarring and sinus tracts as well. So this is a very severe and very inflammatory form of acne. In some individuals, this can also come along with systemic symptoms as well. So not just acne in the skin, but there can also be fevers, joint pains or muscle aches. If we check the blood, there can be elevated white blood cells. There can be anemia, decreased red blood cells and elevated inflammatory markers like CRP. Acne fulminans and acne conglobata seem to be more common in younger male individuals than other patient groups, and it often occurs more on the trunk than on the face. Sometimes we'll see it in young adolescent men who have a lot of comedones, a lot of blackheads on the body, and then they develop this acne fulminans or acne conglobata type of presentation. For some, this can also be triggered by isotretinoin accutane, especially when started at higher doses. So sometimes isotretinoin can be an important triggering factor with acne fulminans. When it comes to treatment of acne fulminans and acne conglobata, the first thing is seeing is their trigger. If someone just started isotretinoin, especially at a higher dose, and then there's this explosion of really severe inflammatory acne like this, one of the most important things to do is to actually stop isotretinoin, to stop Accutane. Even though it's an incredibly helpful acne treatment, when it's a triggering factor for acne fulminans, one of the key parts of treating it is to take a brief break from it. Once we've eliminated triggers like isotretinoin, we need to start something anti-inflammatory to help deal with this intense inflammation and nodulocystic acne. And this is often prednisone. Even though we think of prednisone and steroids as something that can cause acne, in the short term, they can be incredibly helpful. And so for this severe inflammatory acne to calm down that inflammation, we'll often use something like prednisone at a dose of 0.5 to one milligram per kilogram per day. And over a period of four weeks with prednisone, often that hemorrhagic crusting, those ulcers, those erosions, that really inflamed acne is gonna to start to heal and things are going to start to improve. But as I alluded to before, prednisone is not a solution to acne. And of course, prednisone can have important side effects of its own, like higher blood pressure, like higher blood sugars. And when used for long periods of time, it can lead to issues like weakening our bones, causing stomach ulcers and other problems. So, Prednisone is not gonna be a long-term solution here. It's just something to get that short-term inflammation under control. And once we've got that doing better, now again, we can go back to our really effective acne treatment like isotretinoin, but we're gonna start it really slowly and cautiously. So often when we're just treating an average person with isotretinoin, we might start at a dose of like 0.5 milligrams per kilogram per day and then gradually go up. In the setting of acne fulminans and acne conglobata, we need to go really slowly, starting somewhere like 0.1 milligrams per kilogram per day, then doing that for about a month, while continuing the prednisone to help deal with any inflammation that might arise as we start isotretinoin, as we start Accutane. If things are going well after a month, then we can slowly start to taper off of the prednisone, going down on the dose there. We can slowly start to ramp up on the dose of isotretinoin and of Accutane as we go along with the goal to be to try to get off prednisone and to try to really do a full treatment course with isotretinoin. So that would be having a cumulative dose, a total amount of medicine, kind of in the 120 to 220 milligrams per kilogram and having the skin be clear for at least two or three months before stopping. So kind of similar to what we might do in any typical patient with acne, but starting much, much slower and using prednisone to help deal with that inflammation and that purging that can sometimes happen when we start isotretinoin. Here is where we really wanna take advantage of other adjunctive strategies that can help prevent flaring of acne when starting isotretinoin. So to me, antihistamines are a must here, using something like loratadine or cesiratine, you know, five to 10 milligrams, one to two times a day, especially during that initial period when we start isotretinoin. We know just broadly that this strategy can help reduce flaring of acne when starting isotretinoin. And when we have a situation like acne fulminans or acne conglobata, where we know that flaring when we start isotretinoin might be a major issue, having another medicine on board that we know can help prevent that flaring that's pretty low risk, like antihistamines can be a very valuable tool. And so again, during this course, as we're trying to come off the prednisone and go up on the isotretinoin, our main kind of 
day-to-day, month-to-month goal is not having that hemorrhagic crusting, those painful, eroded spots coming back. If that's happening, that means isotretinoin we're going up too fast, or it means the prednisone we're coming off too quickly, and we need to slow down and just take our time. This is something that requires patience, because if we go too fast or too aggressively, it can get a lot worse. So again, the key thing here when it comes to treating acne fulminans and acne conglobata really is patience. It's starting isotretinoin at a very, very low dose and then using adjunctive strategies like prednisone and antihistamines to help manage and prevent that severe flaring that can occur in these settings. Unfortunately, despite our best efforts, for some people, even these strategies don't work. This acne fulminans, this acne conglobata just can't get it under control. And that's where we need to start thinking about other strategies to help. So for those where prednisone is helping, but we just can't quite get off of it, and we're worried about side effects from long-term oral steroid use, this is where something like cyclosporin might be helpful as a non-steroid option. We use this instead of the prednisone to get those anti-inflammatory benefits, but potentially mitigate some of the risks that we can get with prolonged use of oral steroids. We also could think about just other options. So sometimes oral dapsone, which is an oral antibiotic that has anti-inflammatory properties, it can reduce the activity of neutrophils, which are a really important cell in this kind of inflammatory acne. Oral dapsone sometimes can be a very effective treatment option as an alternative to kind of what I was just talking about with oral steroids and isotretinoin. Another option that we can use either as its own treatment or together would be TNF inhibitors. We recently showed in a systematic review that TNF inhibitors can be a helpful anti-inflammatory strategy for severe acne. And for people who have this kind of extremely inflammatory acne, they can be a very valuable treatment option. Now, TNF inhibitors come with their own challenges. They are an immunosuppressing medication, meaning that they can increase the risk of infections. They're associated with other side effects as well and require close monitoring. But for those who have really, really challenging, scarring, highly inflammatory acne, especially those who are getting more systemic symptoms and even maybe kind of along the lines of something like Sappho syndrome, which is a combination of kind of acne and then more systemic inflammation, these can be a very valuable and effective treatment option. So to summarize, acne fulminans and acne conglobata, they're a very severe variant of acne characterized by extreme inflammation. This can be limited to the scan where you have deep nodules, erosions, ulcers, sometimes bleeding a lot of pain, but can also even be throughout the body where there's joint pains, muscle aches, fevers, and other systemic symptoms. When we encounter this kind of severe acne, we need to go very slow in our treatment approach. And often isotretinoin is the treatment of choice, but we need to first control the inflammation with anti-inflammatory approaches like prednisone or cyclosporin, and then very cautiously and gradually introduce isotretinoin starting at a low dose, like 0.1 milligram per kilogram per day and working our way up as we gradually decrease the prednisone or other anti-inflammatory treatment while watching out for any recurrence of that crusting and inflammation. If we see that, that's a sign we need to go slower. Here, antihistamines can be a really valuable adjunctive treatment to prevent that flaring to help fight that inflammation and they're a very straightforward and safe treatment that we can incorporate as well. And then for those who just aren't responding to these kinds of treatments, that's where we have to start using some of our other acne treatment strategies like Dapsone, like TNF inhibitors. For some individuals, we've used Sericycline, which is a narrow spectrum tetracycline antibiotic. Think of it like better doxycycline if we took it and made it really good at acne and really bad at other things. That can be a valuable treatment that has both antibacterial properties to get rid of the acne bacteria, C. acnes, but also anti-inflammatory properties, which can be very valuable in a highly inflammatory condition like acne fulminans or acne conglobata. And for those where isotretinoin is not the right treatment for them for whatever reason, sericycline can be a nice, valuable alternative approach. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Your support really means a lot to me and it's what makes these videos possible. Ask me your questions about acne fulminans and acne conglobata in the comments below and share your experiences so that we can all learn from each other. Until next time, see ya.